This is Trey. This is Ziggy. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Trey, Trey and Ziggy, Ziggy show. show. All right. We back. We back. And we back. And we, we back. back. And we <laughs> back. And we back. So, a uh, lot has happened last time we was on the podcast. A <laughs> lot. And, so, I mean, I think this is like literally like a part three of the Kendrick and Drake mm-hmm. versus. Yeah. And, because everything now has the benefit to see, I see like the dust has settled. I feel like, what, what is your, what are your takeaways of the beef? Something that you really be, believe, like man, it opened your eyes. Or something. I mean, honestly, I don't know. Okay, so. I've been, (laughs) it's funny because Trey and I, we actually went through the list of like Drake's discography in comparison to Kendrick's, (laughs) but I can literally see when I stopped listening to Drake, like as a fan versus a casual listener to songs that are like on the radio and whatnot. Um, But... This beef, it just solidified. And and Kendrick's been, like, a great rapper, and I've been a fan. But it's just, like, the level of pettiness that this man has. Yeah. It's unrivaled. (laughs) You know, it's unrivaled. When ain't nobody trying to step in and be like, J. Cole was like, I ain't doing this. It don't feel good in my heart. But the rumor is that Schoolboy Q... Schoolboy Q told him, <laughs> he oh, yeah. gave him a hint that something was about to go down and he should yeah. get out while he can. <laughs> but yeah, it was like the whole industry rallied around Kendrick, which to me, <laughs> it was beautiful to see. <laughs> I love I love the pettiness, but I also love the confirmation because it's like, I mean, they weren't lying about like, Drake basically riding trends and not having his own sound. And I think that's the thing that lost me as an initial friend, a friend, what? an initial fan of Drake's like back in the day. I forgot which album I saw that I had stopped like listening to him. Oh, yeah. I forgot which one it was. I think it was before the Views album mm. or something like that. Yeah, so you said at some point that you just was like Drake to say it, like yeah, this is not like the same Drake or something like that. Yeah, maybe. exactly. Because you know people say like artists, artists just do like they uh they do progress and they they, they you know chase out just like you know you say Beyonce, she chase you know mm-hmm. herself while oh. she was still she's still coming up and she's yeah, still she, developing as artist. So I'm saying like I think he did change his sound. But, and I feel like a lot of other Drake fans at the, you know, when we when he first started off, he did have this significant sound, but then he started, like, trying to adapt this different lifestyle. Yeah, more like mimicking other people's lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. And not really, like, like, he tried to adapt it, but it's like, you're not... You're not this person. But I think it was hilarious when Kendrick, with whichever song it was, or he was shouting out all the ATL rappers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Basically, he's telling Drake that he knew that street cred, so he's he put all the rappers like, on his song. Like, like us. <laughs> that was, that was on Not Like Us. Yeah, when he was talking about something, let me put you on game. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like. I, and, and you know, when. The whole, you know, the battle was going on, and I mean, the overnight stuff that was popping up, and all those different songs, and music we was getting from both sides, and a lot of a lot of rappers in the game actually were saying that 
some someone was saying Drake had a uh, really, some really really good diss tracks too, uh, and I can see where they come from a standpoint, right? Because Drake would say some things that really would probably like go back go by some you know random listeners, but when you really really look into the lyrics and stuff like that, you can see oh, was this what he said? The only thing that got him on his side though was some of the things he was saying and the community he's actually that's reaching where he's reaching out to. Like it's it's weird because I'm like you gotta know your audience. And I think on his side he didn't know and like he he know the majority of his audience and I think some of the things he probably said did hit home with his art, general audience. Mm-hmm. But like the other the African Americans they will they they like you're not saying that in the barbershop. You're not saying that on a basketball court where you're hanging out with your people that's just like you, so like African Americans. So I say that on that one side, but then the way Kada on his side, the way he was looking at it and how he was painting the picture. Because every soul he painted he, a picture. That's every a great way to put it. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's the thing about Kendrick as an artist. Like the storytelling skill top tier so it's funny even in not like us which is a banger he's yeah. telling a story in that and even though it's like it's so so many layers it's storytelling it's a diss track it's a bop <laughs> or or <laughs> it's something that you gotta like you know, listen say- to while you're laying back with your headphones yeah like, mm, yeah like, that's yeah. deep yeah. like <laughs> that make you you know make you actually want to think you know, some I love of this it. music. That's, and that's the kind of rap that I love. You know, but you know, yeah. and that, that's the only thing that about it because you remember this is a, a beef, and <laughs> I would say I don't want to say a lot of Drake fans. I feel like a lot of Drake fans are like it's a lot of them, and I think they can be on a level of like looking into lyrics and stuff like that. But it's this small little circle of Drake fans that don't really understand it like culture wise they don't understand it and they see like they see that stuff like it's more that's lame you know like and it's kind of like that wave type stuff like oh it's like he it's like the people that's with that wave they don't really they going off of what's going on now like what's going on now what's popping now but yeah some artists they don't go off like that they go off on a time and they're gonna be like the real ones gonna understand this art because it was thought provoking. It was it was I was I, I I went and you know, just I really care about this art. Like Beyonce. Like Beyonce, like Kendrick, <laughs> you know, like Tyler, J. The Cole. Creator, J. Cole. Ooh, Tyler the Creator, that's a good He's one of those people that should be so long. in bot three, <laughs> bo- uh, top three. Tyler Tyler the Creator. Ooh, top three? I say I say top three because he has been going like toe to toe with legends at the beginning of his career. He had he had Lil Wayne and uh, uh, Lil Wayne and what's his name uh, Kanye West. He had mm-hmm. Lil Wayne on the same track, same song. What song was that? It's uh. So it's like a two, it's two songs in one. The first one is like, I think it's with uh, Kanye West. It's him with Kanye West. Then the beat switches. Mm-hmm. Then it goes to Lil Wayne. And it's like, this and is And he's a, he's like a master producer too. Like, And he was just, it's, uh, it was just going to toe to toe. And then like, like, and that's it. Wait, let me see the song. It's called Smuckers. This is off the uh, album. Let me see what's it. Was, Cherry Bomb. This is. Well, that's way back. That's way back. Dang. You got. You got I, 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 <laughs> I played it for you before, but I probably got to play it again for you. Right. So you can be like. But like, they was going bar for bar. And that's way back. Now he just. He's coming up with some crazy raps. And like, his art is. Transforming. Yeah. It really is. So I would say he's up there. I'm saying the big three. I say J. Cole, is, he's up there top five for me. I know he's 
it, that's mm. more of your you grew up with him you it's more of a it's it's personal for you mm. I, I i don't relate to jacob but i can i can definitely lyrically wise it's because you're petty like kendrick kendrick <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I am petty. I'm petty as hell. And Kendrick, Kendrick and, uh, and Tyler, man. Tyler is a troll. You saw when he, he had that interview troll. with, what's his name? Narwar? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> There's an interview uh, recently about this guy. He was pouring his, he was pouring his heart out to Tyler. And Tyler was, was not taking it. Serious at all. Is his name is Gerard Carmichael. Oh. Yeah. That's how you say it? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. He, he got to watch this interview. I didn't watch, I didn't watch the whole thing. I watched clips from it. But the way he was like, answering, he's like, what you thinking about? He said something about like, you talking about this sandwich? Or like, all right, what you just said? Like, he was just like trolling. And this dude, like, look at him dead with, like, you know, feeling his eyes. Like, are you serious? He, like, all right. And Tyler just, just, man, Tyler is a whole troll. Though. Yeah, he but, is. But, like, yeah, one of those people I feel like he's also petty, too. I don't know. Those are my top three. I think Tyler, Kitty, I mean, yeah, in a little way. That's my three. Wow. Um, honestly, if you would have asked me oh, Lord. <laughs> 10 years 10 ago. Years ago. We talking about now. It's hard because right now oh. I'm like J. Cole and Kendrick. 10 years ago, it would have been J. Cole, Kendrick, and Kanye. Really, Kanye? <laughs> Dark Twisted Fantasy. But he didn't really. And then uh, before, okay, and get, before that, like. I get producing wise, but uh, rapping. Yeah, lyrics? he has some good lyrics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he got some. He has some nice ones. But now he didn't fell off with the lyrics. Like I'm like, sir, where is it? <laughs> maybe still, maybe the writer is someone. Does, <laughs> he still does have melodies. Yeah, he got the melody. He has. So he definitely and the producing still. But still I, I don't. Him, but... Me personally, and this is probably a hot take. But K is the, He's not really a. He's not really like. Like bars at the bars, like he, I, I, he I, does, I hear some stuff like it, it's simple. You get it. It's catchy, but it's not like no double intelligence type stuff. It's not like no wordplay. That's what I'm saying. He like, used to like, yeah, like graduation but, days. But you, yeah, but dark, you said, that's what I'm saying. Like darkness and fantasy was like. He, what rap song do you have that you go to total total with J Cole or Drake? Or not Drake, J Cole or uh, Kendrick? What song can you get off of that album? I, I got you. Hold on. Okay. We got time. <laughs> Let me look at it. I'm about to look at it right now. Well, I'm looking at it too. Dark. What is it called? Dark. Twisted. Yeah. My, my beautiful. Okay. That's a long album name. <laughs> I'm telling you, hey, none of these songs going with Kendrick. <laughs> Definitely. Ain't nothing, oh, wait. Ain't, um, nothing going, ain't nothing like this is going up against with Tyler when it comes to lyrics. Ain't nothing. You can ooh, pick one. Oh my gosh. You know, you're right. <laughs> it's catchy. I'm looking, it's now, nice. now I look at the album, I'm like, actually, my favorite ones have features. And it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not even. It's not even. <laughs> Oh, man. What song was it? What song does it have feature that you like? Ooh. I was going to say Devil in a New Dress or So Appalled, but that wasn't even you know, I thought Kanye's you versus it. what? I thought you were going to say Run Away with Pusha T. His. Oh, his, his, Pusha T. Yeah, that was a struggle. Pusha did that. that. But I'm just saying, like, I don't, that's why, but I did like, Tyler. Tyler has them in the lyrics, but as producing, I think uh, Kanye West still has it, producing-wise. Like, he has the yeah. chords. He has that unique sound. He just has, like, that 
that just generational sound like yeah definitely i still think he's like one of the top producers tyler's still young though well how old is tyler he gotta be at least 30. he's still young yeah of course that i'm just saying like if he at least 30 he's 33 he's 33 yeah he's still that'd be one year older than you three years older than me two years older than me two years why are you, you trying to you always okay. try to age me, dang? Okay. You know what I mean? It's because you turned what thirty one. Yeah, in December. Why does Google say other names for Tyler the Creator? DJ Stank Daddy, Tyler Haley, Wolf Haley, Bunny Hop, Ace the Creator. Who is this? Who was it? <laughs> Google is that? Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> he troll and his fan base is troll. So whoever did that, I believe it could be telling all his fan base. You know how it's crazy how fast they. <laughs> I swear. I'm You're sorry. right because his Instagram name is Felicia the Goat. Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, what's happening here? Oh my gosh, is this is oh man. <laughs> is this Instagram profile picture? <laughs> I'm so done with him. Come on, aesthetic feed. All right. All right. Let's right. get. So, <laughs> so you said, Kanye, but now when you said two years ago, it was Kanye. Who was it? J. Cole and Kendrick. So now it's now. <laughs> I know. I don't know who takes that third spot. Oh, so you scared? Huh? You don't want to say nothing. No. Just throw somebody there. No, because you can't throw somebody there. Nobody's worthy. It's so many artists, rap artists, right? There. You have 21, you have... And he's not in there. See? I like 21, but he's not in there. Okay. You have Wiz Khalifa. No, he's not in there. You have I, uh, I Gucci. Like him a lot. You got Outkast. You got like a thousand still out there. You got Big Boy oh, still out there. Oh, dang. How dare I? <laughs> I'm like, okay, Andre. I put Andre in the third uh, slot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Because because if the three of them make a song, <laughs> think about the production and the lyricism. <laughs> My mind is gonna explode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that oh oh my gosh. Okay, that's a <laughs> that's a great top three right there. Mm-hmm. Dang, how dare I forget? Oh yeah, I mean, it's a lot of rappers. About I haven't listened to that flute album in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I know why. <laughs> I was actually listening to it a lot when it first came out. <laughs> it's, uh, it's CD <laughs> Right? All right. Well, so, more of a story. Who we say? Who who we say won the uh, the battle? Who won the battle? Kendrick Lamar. And why do you say that? Because it's easy to say because he had a catch too. But what is it that made you say that? Like, nah, this is it's the way I think it's because of his skill of storytelling and his use. He's a natural poet, like. It's not like he's just trying to rhyme on a beat. Like, he's a natural poet and storyteller, and the combination of that and his personality and his pettiness is lethal. <laughs> like, and it, it just worked. <laughs> but also, all the information he dug up, <laughs> sure, whether, whether something was true or not, I don't know, all the alleged information. <laughs> Listen, he just used it to the best of his ability, and Drake flopped. <laughs> Drake flopped on whatever information or non-information he found. It was just not. Well, you know, they, <laughs> but they said, but they said that with Kendrick, they said Kendrick is just saying everything what people have been saying. He just saying it the way he would say it in a rap. Yeah. So, and he his creativity to be is what really war because I think that the more like you have to be creative in, in a uh, battle you gotta hit them where they would 
think you would try to, you know, yeah. attack at that moment. I think what Kendrick, you know, Kendrick, <laughs> like I said, like Kendrick literally do exactly what he was doing. And he just said, he just said what the culture said. Like, you can go back and look at actual videos of actually these pioneers and like these crazy rappers back then was saying stuff about Drake. Like, hey, side note, I think this is so funny with Soulja Boy. He said this probably like four or five years ago on the Breakfast Club. And everybody laughed at Soulja Boy. And he Drake. Was like, Drake. Drake. He said he stole my whole. <laughs> Bar for bar, word for word. <laughs> it was what, kiss me through the phone, or something like that. Yeah. And like he was like, and it's so crazy because now you look at it now, and like, bro, that dude, he was making, he was making sense, like, he was talking hot stuff. Right. That is crazy <laughs> because now everybody says like he he goes he hop on the next trend that he he's that alive that he goes to the next trend whoever's doing the next something. Yeah, and, and coming up in the industry, so you go to the next city, you know, whatever. So, like, in Atlanta, you know what? I mean, so, you went from Atlanta, right? Hmm. I don't know. Soldier Boy. Yeah, I think he is. He His full name is DeAndre Cortez Way. Cortez. I have a Cortez in my phone. He from Chicago. What? Mm. He from Chicago. Huh. I would have never guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> well, He's also 33 years old. What? Yep. That's what we're doing, what everybody wanted to do. Like, Dang. That's crazy. He had a crazy life, especially coming up in the social. Like, yes. Yeah, yes. YouTube was popping by space crazy. And he's a trouble. Oh, man. Yeah. I wonder if him and Tyler Boyd are the same as. <laughs> they both hella trolls. Let's see, July 28th. Oh, I know somebody with that birthday. Yeah, these people been in the game for like 10, 13 years now. Oh, no, he's born in March. <laughs> Is that Funny. Tyler just born in March? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, all right, so we already know what side I was on the whole time. It was Kendrick. Kendrick definitely what did I say? Because yeah. he knew his audience and he knew yep. exactly what to do at the end. He 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 was it was just it was just chess. Well it was that it was that how he dropped right after the drink. That that's a and, and I had what about what about friends actually hit me up and was saying like do you think he, uh, I forgot what he, the, the term that he used, but he, like, he stepped on himself, like, when he dropped the song, right after he dropped the song, like, it was, like, within, like, I think a day, but I was, like, like, he undercut himself, like, do you think that was a bad thing? I was, like, well, Drake first, when he first came out, he was, like, when you gonna drop, when you gonna drop, when you gonna drop, I was at, my question was, you want him to drop, or you don't want him to you can't ask for one thing and then he starts doing it, then you get mad <laughs> when he does it and say that's hey, a handicap. He, he, he was cooking it, some stuff up in silence. Yeah, I'm like... I'm he was like, blind and methodical. Yeah. I feel like... Um, oh, man. It was just... <laughs> Drake just had no chance. <laughs> I was like, once Kendrick said he... like. Was Kendrick was down, and the thing is, I'm glad this is over because who said it I was? was uh, because <laughs> I, well, uh, we have respite. We have a rest because, period. Because what happened? <laughs> though, because like like we was just watching a video earlier. We had that BBL juicy. BBL juicy. Okay. <laughs> BBL juicy. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna go all the way into the summer. Yeah, it is. We could have probably died out. All the, the videos. Part, that's what I'm guessing. People but turning it up. I think what, yeah, I think what happens is that. It's on the radio. It's circulating on the radio. It's he, on the chat. He's going to put it, the cherry on top is going to be some other 
Mm-hmm. It's gonna be some. It's gonna be. A, I feel like he's gonna have the the person that won. He's gonna be on the track, and he's gonna have a a, a verse. But I think he's gonna actually have another, like, no rapper on it, like a celebrity. Yeah. Rapper. I think that's gonna. Oh, be. this one isn't on the. I wonder if he. I don't think it could be on the charts though. Yeah, probably it's just not. A, it's just an instrumental, I would say. Yeah, but it's crazy how so many people are covering, like, are are also adding. <laughs> they're adding their own diss on top of that. You know what I think it is. That beat. Yeah, I think so. I, Drake getting diss like. I think I know. Twenty I, times over. Okay. Hundred times. Over. I had a, I had a random thought. All right. So this is what I think. I think this is what I, I think it is. I'm sorry. So, you know how Drake just told Petro to shut up and make some drugs, right? Mm-hmm. Make some beats, whatever it was. And as an artist, you would think that's very disrespectful because that's that's what you've been able to do. Mm-hmm. And then you just gonna be like, shut up and go make some beats. And Metro Boomin, as a true artist, mm-hmm. know how artists think. Yeah, that is like if you a uh, ballerina and somebody say, shut up and go dance. I like think about, you know, I don't I think this is a stretch, but like, yeah, I think that's a stretch. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but it's just like, imagine like somebody like, oh, like, go shut up and go dribble a ball type stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, that's offensive. Like, that's how it was. That, that's how it'd be. Because like, it's implying that that's all you're good for. Get out this conversation. Right. Like, you're only good for this one thing and stick to that. So if you want to go on that, on that side of it and tell me, tell another artist, tell an artist to just shut up and go do something, then they like, well, I'm pretty sure a lot of these artists out here, these dancers, these, you know, these uh, musicians, they probably felt, they probably was told that too. You know, when you about the culture, you really into mm-hmm. your crowd you can people will feed off of that they gonna feel that and they go want to be a part of that and i think that's what it was with retro Boobie. he just went a smart he went a smart way about it i don't be personally i even see this way like how he was gonna respond did you listen i i really wanted him to make a beat but i was also because i was I was like, he need to get off Metro. Like, <laughs> I I thought it was weird that he was beefing with with the producer. Yeah, that's crazy. And I'm just like, yeah. I, I thought he was take that's like a lazy way out of a beef. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> just like just like him taking shots, <laughs> yeah, taking shots at Kendrick Lamar's wife, yeah, or like, wifey, wifey, like baby yeah. mama, like what Drake? Oh, that man. it's so. Yeah. It's so cowardice to me. It's because he was running out of stuff to say about Kendrick. <laughs> <laughs> Deep down, he knows. Yeah, <laughs> he, that know, last track, he knows what we all know. That, that last track was, <laughs> he sounded really defeated. <laughs> he, he, we started and then, <laughs> and then the, the videos of him is sitting in his uh, living room uh, watching Godfather's. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, Jake is weird. Yeah. <laughs> so I say, I mean, this is probably gonna take up fifty percent of our podcast. But do we, what do you think we go for now? Like with Drake, well, how do you think he could probably turn this? I think he can turn this into huh? a positive. Like, how do you think he gonna be able to get back into? Because he he has he he's gonna have followers regardless, and he still gotta have some connections to the game. But because you know after. Every beat, people still get on top. Like, I mean, honestly, I feel like top. he got to come out with a hit uh, to circulate on the radio to get people to slow down when talking about the beef. But, I mean, it's basically, it's going down in history. It's one of the, like... Do you think it's, like, the biggest Most fall? entertaining beef. Do you think it's the biggest fall? Uh, like a setback? Yeah, for an uh, artist. Because some of these artists, when they beef, they wasn't really like I was at like for example like Tupac and what was it Biggie? They was like 20, 21, I believe. What they was doing? It was 
music because they died really young. So, but these individuals, they're older, they're in their 30s. Yeah. They, so they've been built their whole career. And they yeah. had like this pinnacle, right? They can buy boat, yachts, all that stuff. They can buy triple, like three matches. I'm like, do you think this could be the, could be a, a, one of the biggest falls that setbacks the, that a rapper could actually? You know, I think so. I really think so. Because it's like, and not only was it just Kendrick, Kendrick or Metro Boomin, there is a lot of other people in the industry, but that it's like people saying stuff, but not staying to it. The mm. level is Kendrick. Cause I guess NDAs or whatever is happening. Like, in uh, the yeah. industry. you know, it's like, like he's other label, people I can't say nothing like that. Yeah. It's like a whole bunch of stuff, but you, it's like people is, are like, everybody hinting at the same thing. Yeah. What is it? Universal or whatever. So these or whatever it Sony. is. It's like, Universal. it's like, that's the top of it. Did they branch off all the other stuff? But. but yeah, I, I mean, I feel like he, he's still going to make money, but as far as his, his credibility. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's just in the streets though. Some people don't care about that. Why is PBS covered the feud? <laughs> I'm looking at this article. <laughs> it says a look at the Kendrick oh, Lamar you know great Robbie feud of? and its implications. You know the of? What? What is the great? <laughs> what is it? The grades? <laughs> okay, for for those <laughs> those of you who don't know, somebody did an AI kids bot version. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> they not like us. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh my god. So yeah. So I think uh yeah. It is so perfect because <laughs> you can probably talk a whole <laughs> podcast about this beef. It was so perfect because like at the end with uh BBO Dreezy coming out, but it's not like a ended up a sitcom. Like <laughs> like it's just the icing on the cake. It was just it was like so entertaining. This whole year been so entertaining, especially since January. It been, it been, it been, it's been popping. Mm. Cal Williams. Yes. He said 2024 was the year. All the truth was coming to the light. Diddy. Cal Williams. Diddy. Exposed. Diddy exposed. And others. He did it. He did all of that. He did it. Did he did all of his tongue and, But it was beat. like a trickle effect. It was, oh, I still haven't listened to that song. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do it. You got it. <laughs> Christian Combs and 50 Cent beefing. If it was good, it would be on my feet. It's over there. It's not on my feet. So tell him to get on my feet right. and listen to it. But yeah. I don't think is. anybody trying to give him streams. <laughs> <laughs> they still give R. Kelly uh, streams with these TikTok the trends. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the trapped in the closet. <laughs> that trapped in the closet was a character. It was crazy. It was actually, man, I'm not going to lie. We coming, in, coming up at that time and listened to the trapped closet and heard about the new chapter drop. It was like, yeah. I think, when I was younger, I thought oh it was going to be like, probably like three, three, like, ten, like, like three videos. Like, oh, I'm not saying it wrong. So I thought it was going to be like three chapters. And it was like ten episodes. All right, so there's 30 total. That's what I thought. This. I don't even know where it is. I definitely. I was. I just like. It was like a TV spin, show. was <laughs> not there. And you know what's made it worse? This the bad background. The it's just the low quality of everything. The acting was even bad. It it's was like just, a stage was, play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was hella dramatic. Yes. I don't. If it did it air on BET or like did, MTV yeah. or uh, I would say BET because that's when we had Tom Warner. Shout out to Tom. Oh, you, know. uh, you go to Channel One and you can watch all your TV shows, the movies, all that stuff. That's now I don't I know you remember all the channels. Yeah, I do not. Remember. I only that. remember Channel Fifty Four because that was like what? CW or something on. Oh, I say your stories. The funny. <laughs> I do. Okay, so shout out to all the 90s babies. So, Channel 22, you already know that one. It's Cartoon Network. Now, I get fuzzy with the 
Channel well, Channel Thirty was MTV, and then after that, then you had Channel Thirty Three. I think that was like Spike or something like that. And the sports oh, channels around the 33, and then you get to Forty One. I think that was Disney. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's Disney Forty One. Forty Three is Nickelodeon, and then I think Fifty One was Comedy Central. So yeah, I had these down. That's when that's when you had the last buddy on the remote control. The remote control had that one buddy that's called Laugh. So you go to <laughs> that's a whole other story. That that one, <laughs> you was, if you was on Showtime or you was on uh, HBO at twelve o'clock, that last saved you so much. But that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> that's a whole other conversation. But anyways, and if you. Are <laughs> you laughing so much? <laughs> This spun off. It's like, Why are you so how much? did we get here? How did we get here, William? We were talking about the channels. Remember the channels back in the day? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, but it was fancy. You had the HD channels or whatever. That was a, you still laugh. Just keep going. I'm going to stop. You, it, it was really fancy. It would be the same channels, but with three in front of it. So, it would be like 322. It'd be 330, 341. That's how you know if you was fancy. Well, I mean, my grandparents were a little fancy. But, well, uh, you fancy, huh? Yeah, yeah. Fancy. And then, you know, and, uh, HBO was 420, 423 was like Showtime or whatever. Or not. Yeah, but yeah, I, I remember that stuff. That, I grew up on that stuff. Yeah. <sighs> well, we have one more segment we can talk about. What's what time are we at? What's happening? Mm, we've been talking for thirty six minutes. I mean, we just we just stick in one little, one this one thing, this one topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so talk about everything coming to light, right? Twenty twenty four, you know, everybody gonna be really bringing these to light and talk about these now that he did be talking about before. And now we in this, and if you're a '90s baby, you can feel this switch because we came up with technology and the smartphone, and we was seeing develop to. And, and I think it was one of the fastest things we ever see develop in front of our faces. Like we haven't seen even cars develop this fast, and how. Now that technology has developed and social media has like went crazy, now we have this one app, TikTok, that has this ridiculous algorithm and it actually targets this audience to the point that where that specific audience and group can actually form something. And one of the things we I haven't seen on TikTok forming is like like just the protest about anything and is and I would say I love I like TikTok I would just say that I like TikTok I like that it can bring people together because other social media has I would say it has but it has been filtered to the point that it's to a certain extent it don't bring yeah the algorithm yeah it, <laughs> it's kind of like a it's just it, it and it feels funny, but when it comes to TikTok, it seems genuine. It seems like, yes, this is the actual thing I actually want to see. So, so we've been have social media. We, we've been have people that form groups that do these, they use that to their advantage politically or whatever, whatever. But TikTok is now coming up to a rebellion where they can actually start protesting and blocking and say we need to boycott places and it's actually working so my question for you is do you see this actually the new wave of protesting because we've been protesting before in the streets and it's where like people will get injured people will lose their chance at the job people get I mean, people are still protesting in the streets but, yeah. but I feel like it does give you like an alternative, like, yeah, um, and I feel like the main thing driving people to social media to 
to tell stories, which I think we saw this happen. What was that? I think we saw we saw this happening a lot. Well, not I think I know. We saw this happening a lot in 2020 when George Floyd's death kicked off a whole lot of protesting and marches all around the world. Yeah. And um, I think the thing that social media has an advantage of is telling the, the actual story, how it's happening in real time. People are going live at the protests. People are telling stories from people at the protest. Whereas the news, they are telling, sometimes it's like biased storytelling yeah. of what went down or they're focusing yeah. on like, oh, these students are arrested or these these people are yeah. aggressive. They like these two people at like a protest of like a thousand. Like, yeah, so this, like, is what, this is what I'm trying to say. I'm saying that that is a, uh, a, a way of protesting. I'm mm-hmm. trying to find a word, but right now, that's all I can say. Uh, but what I'm saying is that instead of having us to be in the street, especially black people, to get injured, to get killed, and then the same stuff that we get killed and injured by it still happened. I'm saying like for example, you know, somebody get you know, oh no, I'm not saying example, but something happens, we get five alternatives while by using TikTok. Like for example, stop going to Starbucks. And like you said, we have a twenty four hour round the clock type of surveillance of the situation with TikTok. It's showing like like Kellogg situation, it was people was going to the store and showing the show store that's in Alabama, uh, a store, a, yeah, a store in Florida, store in Texas. It's showing that it's working. It gives us hope. Yeah. Right. We can go about that way instead of going in the street yelling the names. I feel like yeah. it, it does. It we did that before because we were trying to be seen on camera. Like, because nobody is not going to report 10,000, 20,000 people protesting. Nobody's not going to report that. Somebody's going to be out there reporting it. That's why we needed the cameras of the news. But now we have the cameras of liberty. I do think it's more, um, I would say, I would say it's like a elevated protest. I would say it's an accurate, like a, the accuracy of what you try to get out of it. Do you think it's more accurate than it is being on the street. That's part of what my question is. Um, like more effective? More effective, yeah. Um, I honestly feel like it depends on like what you think is effective, right? So if your point, say these students on campus, um, if they find out where the dollars for the funding of the institution is coming from, or the fact that like some, like some some protesters they do find that out but some protesters are just they're protesting the genocide period so i feel like people are out there for different reasons and so mm-hmm. that's why i think it's like so that like it could be skewed with that kind of with like the different perspectives on that like with the different kind of protesters and their different reasons for being out there so i feel like it is effective um, by showing, hey, this many people are saying that y'all out of line for this because that matters. It's showing like public opinion, but it's also showing that, um, you know, these people care and know what's going on in the world and they care what their country stands up for and stands against. So, it's like it's putting more pressure like no matter even if it's like the police brutality um on these protesters are happening like even though they're like focusing on that there's also focus on like these people are out here and it's like it's a matter of showing how many people have this one voice 
for this side of the argument that's like, hey, we probably should. <laughs> I don't know if they ever going to be like, we shouldn't be doing this because <laughs> America's capitalism. Mm. But I do think that um, it can't go hand in hand because like me as like I'm 31 and I mean, I'm not saying age has anything to do with it. It's just that like, you know, I do have to work. If I'm not working and I go to a protest and get arrested, like who's going to be paying my bills? <laughs> I mean, I got a husband, but <laughs> it's also like I, I help to pay bills in this household. So it's like that kind of thing. And me and my story sisters were talking about I this would say before. That we, I, you're willing, you're willing, you're willing, you're willing, so. Yeah, it's like we, but I contribute to the pot. <laughs> so um, I feel like everybody's needed in it. So like if you're not able to be out there and do it in a different way. So like. So you say it's like a better alternative. Yes. So, so like. If you, if you can't mm-hmm. afford the risk, then you can go online. But right. if you can't afford the risk, you sh- can't show your body out there. And, and then. I just had a with risk, too right now with that right. situation because. Oh, go ahead. Um, so I feel like. If you are, so say if you're not like out there in person, but you're um, having a more monetary boycott, like the monetary is going to hit just as hard as the people who are like speaking up about it and like publicly condemning the people who are supporting the genocide going on. And I feel like it's hitting them at all sides of like the the capitalist society of America. <laughs> so that's why I I like that it's it's like different options mm. of protest. And I feel like they all can be affected in different areas. But the, the well the question before it was just how effective that is. And you said at the same time it depends on how your perspective is. So that's not really, I feel like it goes into the trauma. You can't actually tell somebody how to respond to trauma. But, yeah. so I had two things. I have two things to say. I'm trying to figure out which one I say first. I was saying, like, I did, okay, so this is going to be a side note. So I just would think about, oh, well, what about the people that I guess overseas that don't have a TikTok, that don't have a smartphone? But then they have the news and a T where the TV is at, I don't know, somewhere local in that town, city, whatever, in the, in the house. And they actually can see the protests like that. Yeah. I think that was a thing I thought I just had to. And but I was gonna say this because SNL had, you know, they had a uh, skit on there and it was like which we if you had a kid would you want your kid to be out there on the, on, you know, out there protesting? Or you was hoping that it would be some other kid out there at that school protesting? Your kid. That reminds me of... In the books. Of, <laughs> that reminds me of, um, it, well, not just one particular story or movie, but it's like the stories and like the movies about the civil rights movement. How there would be some families like, you are not going to go out there. It's so dangerous. Yeah. You need to be out there. Like, you need to be studying because I'm paying for your tuition. Like, it would be like different things like yeah. that. But um, honestly, I would be proud of my child for doing that. Because mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, you're exercising your right to stand up for it. Because you got to take away your right. Listen. Like, what you can talk about. I and mean, that's... We're not going to talk about the actual subject we're not going to actually say the words but it's the right of the law what we talk about but because like as a as a journalist (laughs) so but you know what we're talking about and like i'm saying like so you say yes that they could you will be you you will let you'll be okay with them protesting yeah 
But I definitely would. Um, this is the last semester. But I would. Yeah. You spent seventy five k. For nah, three would... trips, three <laughs> trips to the school and back home because she had to, he uh, had to move in out. No, I would be, I would be, be okay like, with it. Go ahead, do you? Because honestly, um, I would definitely want them to be communicating though, because there, when you go on protests because we know about police brutality and the way that law enforcement reacts in those situations, at least in America, um, <laughs> there are some resources you need to know and have. Um, like during the protests in 2020, when I was a PR coordinator, yeah. um, our e-board was uh, gathering like resources for like different, so say if people didn't want to be out on the ground protesting, they, yeah. they could donate send their money to different organizations right. that would be assisting yeah. with protesters, like feeding them, giving them water, um, funds to bail them out of jail, um, things like that. So we would be sharing resources like so that. You, so, so I would be like, all right, let me know so I can set up like a plan in case something happens. So you say that. I would, I would have my child's back yeah. as long as what they're protesting is. Yeah. <laughs> So, but what you're trying to say is not immoral. You, you have a child, and they're processing. You just say like, "Hey, be smart about it. Know where to go. Know where you need to. All right, let me go ahead and leave the situation." Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm gonna be you in know, on like, it. We are gonna be training, okay? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I would want them to talk to me, and not necessarily like ask permission, but. I'm going to have their back if it's, you know, it's for a good cause. cause. Yeah. Not no like, like I, don't, I don't know what I would be against. But I would be definitely proud that they're standing up for something and using their voice. Yeah. So I would just want to be in the know so I can have plans to, you know, just be prepared. Right. <laughs> I can just be prepared. Yeah, I'm with- agree with you. I'm saying the same thing for myself. I'll say that I want them to be educated. And they're going to be smart. So I know that I want them to be able to be like, because, you know, some students, some, some some kids will be nervous to talk to their parents because they're rebelling. Because rebellion seems like a bad thing in some household. And I want them to ever think that if you let me believe it now. The problem is going to be like, if we actually believe in that thing. Because whatever going on now, it makes sense. But what about in the future? It's something else and it's like really not that serious to us. But to them, it's like, I would say it will be a line you have to draw. But if, you know, if they haven't crossed that line yet, then I can rock with you. I can see what you need, what, what's up. Educate you, hopefully, you know, see where your mind is at. But then, but you do what you got to do because, you know, the youth is the future. And no matter what, they got to live. Gotta it. Be the children mm-hmm. of the future. Yeah. They got to live here. And, you know, and they got to take care of us. So, if y'all got a lot of people rocking with you, and y'all believe in what y'all talking about, you really to die for it. Then go ahead and do you got do you whatever you gotta do. But yeah, that's how I really feel about that. What if I was in college when I was in college, <laughs> when I was in college and, and there's something like this was going on, would I be protesting in the streets? Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't care about that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm not cap. Like I knew I needed to graduate, but I, at the same time, it was just like a another thing I was just doing. It wasn't like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I remember when I was in college, I, yeah. Trayvon Martin got killed. Oh, yeah. And I was at NAACP yeah. in that chapter at U of H. And it was like, because it's not like you could plan like, oh, my finals coming up. Like, <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of like, but there's different things you can do. So what we had, we had like a town hall on campus and we invited some leaders in the community and basically it was like so people can voice their 
you know, the struggles that they had within their feelings. And um, it was basically a talk on, it was kind of just like a, you know, get it off your chest thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of like grieving together. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was like a whole bunch of strangers. It would be some people we knew, but like, right. it would be just people we invited from like the community or like on campus. Um, and then it was like some people were there to give resources for like, um, just to, I guess, to support you just like mentally through it. But also, it, I think where we got stumped at was like, what should we do next? Mm-hmm. Like, what can we do? And I feel like that was like the biggest thing because it's like, I don't remember if there was like a, a protest in the city, but I don't remember. For uh, Trayvon? Yeah. Mm. But I, I remember we had that event and it was like a, it was kind of like a elephant in the room because it, it was just like, what do we do next? And I don't think we came up with, it's like, it wasn't a yeah, I think plan was... we could have. It was just like, we were mad. We were angry. We were sad yeah. in disbelief that this kid was attacked. Are you from Houston? You remember that? Let us know. Because I don't think we actually, I don't think we actually have anything besides where Georgia, was it Georgia? No, no, no. So wait, where he, he was where what's his name oh George Floyd George Floyd that's right what's his name but George Floyd that's cause that was yeah, that was big and I remember I was so glad we went out to that march yeah because I was I felt like I had a lot of stress and emotions <laughs> built up and really anxiety because yeah. it's like I'm black and everybody right. like Everybody, like, I'm thinking about all the men that I have in my life, mm-hmm. and it just like hiding my anxiety. Just like, I'm like, right. oh, where are they going? Oh, they didn't pick up the phone this time. Oh, like, it was just like built up. But I think when I got out there and I saw that it wasn't just black people protesting, right. that sh- that kind of sh- I was put off by that because I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was surprised. But, I mean, it was, like, a good surprise. I feel like whenever injustices happen, it should be the human thing right. to call it out and, like, unite against it. Um, yeah, and I was I was so shocked. Yeah, but we that's can a, talk about this yeah. all night. Okay. Yeah, but that's it. <laughs> we ended on a... Social justice note. Social justice, we have to talk about it. Right? Hey, did we even get our shout out? Um. (laughs) Okay, we do have a shout out for this. For Abby. We have a small business shout out. We're shouting out Abby. Um, I think it's like Abby's Jewelry. (laughs) I went to an event um, a couple weeks ago. Go. And she she makes um, earrings out of polymer, out of polymer clay, and resin I think, and I got these cute pink and white stone looking um, stud earrings, but she has so many. And I really want to buy more. Mm-hmm. That's all out of purple ones. And lavender, <laughs> but um, y'all go check her out. I think her store. Actually, I'm gonna post it on our Instagram page, our new Instagram page. Hey, follow us shout at out for all the people that followed us <laughs> with follow no us. posts. Uh, oh, for yeah, we had no posts on there right now. Go ahead, let's go to the let's see who followed us so we can shout them out. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like yeah, I'm gonna tag. I'll, I'll tag her shop on the um on that page. Oh, six, 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 six. Oh, oh. yeah, six dollars. Shout out to Mo. <laughs> Shout out to Tell. Shout out to Zach. Shout out to Kelsey. Okay. And uh, Royal Diamond. They are following mm-hmm. a new 
I have to see those. Uh, oh, shit. Okay. Oh, it's a lovely dog. It's like the chair, chair squad. Cheerleaders. Hmm. As you may. Yeah, so, yeah. The Royal Divers. Shout out to Royal Divers. Yep. So, well, that's it. Yep. That's all, folks. This is Trey. This is Ziggy. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. We hope you tune in next week. <laughs>